Right, we're back again now with interpolation and in your book, this is the page that we are dealing with. <coughs> the meaning of interpolation simply is to locate intermediate values within a sequence. And the one that I've chosen here, because most people seem to know a little bit about uh, the temperature, is the example of Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now, in the book, I've actually drawn out the two scales. So Celsius runs up to 100 from 0, and Fahrenheit runs up to 212 from 32. Now, the one question in, in, a, in a class situation, I always start with this one. I say, OK, supposing I have the middle value here, 50 degrees Celsius, can you tell me what the corresponding value will be here? Okay, now, this should be quite reasonable, it's, it's actually halfway, okay, but you've got to be a little bit careful. People will say, this is how some people will work it out, they'll say, ah, right, there are 100 units there, half of 100 equals 50, so let's do the same here. There are 180 units here, half of 180 is 90, and they'll come up with the answer 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I wonder why they get it wrong. Well, they've only done half the problem. Can you see that, that whilst there are 180 units here, the main difference lies in this little bit of data. This one starts at zero. So the 50 here has two signatures, really, or it's two descriptions. First of all, it's a distance, because it's half of the 100, a distance but more importantly it's also a value and this is what most people don't understand so the 50 is both distance and value now the 90 here is only the distance okay all you've done is you've told me what the distance is here 180 it's half the distance so the 90 only represents a, a distance. It doesn't represent the value. The value that we need for the answer is this, 90 plus 32. Ah, that's right, of course. The reason being is we started with 32. So if you can understand the difference between distance and value, then you'll do very well with interpolation. Now, when you're looking at hydrostatics tables, now in your book, there are some hydrostatics tables included. Very rarely will any of them ever start at zero. They probably won't. They'll always start at one value and go to another. So what you need to be very careful of is that when you start at a value, supposing you have a value of 6,500 tonnes, and then you're, um, as you uh, increase, this might go to, say, um, we can have, say, 6,000 tonnes here. <coughs> if you want to know what a particular value is here, then take this distance, this is 6500 minus 6,000, OK? So the actual distance is 500 here. And then you want to work out the proportion that's required. So if this, uh, for example, was, say, 7 metres, and this was 7.2 metres, I'm just picking out these values roughly, and you wanted 7.1, this would be halfway. So you'd multiply that by a half and say, ah, half of 500 is 250. That wouldn't be the answer, okay? You'd have to say, oh, it's halfway here. So this would be 6,000 plus the 250. You've got to be careful that you found the, the, the distance, but you need the value. This is what the examiners are requiring. You need to get the value. So let's have a look now in the book, back to the temperature scale. OK, and it's explained here. <coughs> and as you see, look at this. You see, we have the right value, 122, which is 90 plus the 32 we started with. Let's have a look at the next one. A body registers 162 Fahrenheit. Find the equivalent in Celsius. So here's a solution. Now, 162 is the actual value. We need to find the distance. So 
If we take 32 away, then I get 130 on the scale. So we need 130 out of the 180. That's a proportion, right? There's 180 units there, but we've just found that we only need 130. So we multiply the 100 by this fraction to give me 72.2 degrees. Most people realize that there's a formula for this. This is the formula, so you can easily check your answer. But the crux of the matter is to find the so-called multiplying factor. So in the first example, I gave you 50, so it's 50 out of 100, the whole length, which is a half. Notice in the second example, it's 130 out of 180. We're comparing the distances, or 13 eighteenths. And that's what you'll need to deal with. I'm not sure whether I've actually got the hydrostatics table in here. There's one in the back of your workbook, and you can actually use that one as well. Let's go straight on to that. Okay. All right, we've come to the last topic then. This is in Appendix B, and there's a nice little section which you'll all cover dealing with Simpson's Rule Number 1. Now, Simpson's Rule is a great rule for working out areas of irregular figures, but you don't need calculus, all right? So, in English, it's actually uh, looks a bit complicated. To the sum of the first and last ordinates, add four times the even and twice the odd. Multiply this by a third to give the area of the figure. Now, most people say, what on earth does that mean? Okay, we haven't got a clue. The best thing to do is to work through an example, all right? Then the English meaning becomes quite clear. First of all, for this rule to be effective, an odd number of ordinates is used. That gives you an even number of parts. So here's a classic problem, which is a good example to study. The examiner has given me this one. A flat plate is shaped as shown below. Right? So there's a curved part and it's cut off at x equals 8. It's been sliced off. The dimensions are in millimetres. We've been asked to find the area in square centimetres. So go and watch that. There's a change of units there using Simpson's first rule. OK, so here's a solution. Using that particular diagram, Okay, we notice that the total length, okay, so the length is 320 millimetres, okay, or 32 centimetres, and we've got nine ordinates, see, eight including the zero, you've got nine ordinates, that gives us eight spaces. So 32 divided by 8 will give us 4 centimetres, and this will be the interval. Okay, so we'll label that as the interval. And that's the same throughout the whole plate. Okay, so we make up a table of values, so what we now do is quite simply write all these ordinates out. Okay, now you might notice that we've converted the millimetres to centimetres, all right? because the answer was in fact required in centimetres. So we've put the ordinates down very carefully. Now the Simpsons multiplier starts with 1. It's 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 4, and finishes with 1. What we now do is multiply the two together to give the so-called product and the sigma, this is the, the um, Greek capital letter S, sigma, is 180.6. Now, I'll show you a nice little technique here on the calculator. Right? This often is not done, but I can show you this rather nicely. If you have many numbers to add up, and it's a long calculation, watch what you can do. Okay, when I'm multiplying this out, 1 times nothing is nothing. This is in the first one, so if I can just perhaps do it like this, this might be a little better. So the product is nothing. Now, the next one, 3.54 multiplied by 4, okay, equals, and now I can write it in to show the examiner, all right, what I'm doing, I'm showing it the process, but to help me, I hit M plus. M plus is really useful. This is memory. Okay, 
Of course, hopefully I've checked that there's nothing in the memory beforehand from the previous calculation. Now I hit AC. Just to check, I'll hit recall, RCL, memory, and it's in there. Clear again, and I'm set to go. Next one, 6.32 multiplied by, this time is the 2, equals, now I hit M+. Plus. I've written it down here to show the examiner, and I clear it. So if I hit recall, M+, plus, those two should be in, and that's correct, just to check. So this is a great way of adding up all your numbers at the very end. You keep going all the way through like this very carefully and the sum then will give you, when you hit recall M plus, finally it will give you 180.6. Okay. So back to the book. Now we can actually work this out. I can show you the bits that are required. So the area now, Simpson's rule is very simple to apply. Area here is the interval, which is 4. This was the interval up here, 4, multiplied by, and the formula says, one-third of the sum of the products, which is 180.6. And this will give you 240.8 centimetres squared. OK, there we go. And there's nothing more difficult than that. So once you know the actual data that the examiner has given you, you've got your x and y values. These will give you the x values will give you the interval. The y are the ordinates to multiply out. Read the question carefully and put the answer in the right units. Then there's no problem. Now at this stage, um, we have 